as we all trust the Lord to come in a mighty way, in a special way. It starts off with the declaration. It's about God moving. So if we must see revival and the revival that will continue, we better cling, cling, cling. So that new life can be new life. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. This is another good day that the Lord has given us opportunity to share his word. And it's my joy. It's a long time since I ministered to you. And today, I really rejoice that the Lord has given me this opportunity. My name is uh, Pastor Isaac Muriuki uh, from Crisco Church, Umoja, Nairobi. Let's just start with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, the Great One, our Heavenly Father, we humble ourselves before you. Even as we start to minister, may you minister through us, our God, that the word we speak may it be from you, and may it get to the hearts of the listeners, even to change them, even to bring glory to your name. We pray, we declare, that no weapon fashioned against us shall prosper in Jesus' name. And from the start to the very end, we shall celebrate even as we minister. Father, we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This day, today, I want us to share a message that I believe will be interesting to many of us. And uh, the message is about salvation and transformation. Many are... Uh, at times, people have mistaken what is salvation vis-a-vis -vis transformation. There are times we have thought that once saved, that's all we need to do. Once we have said we have received Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, that's all we need to do. And we sit back and we set to go to heaven. But this is not the desire of our God. Our God desires that we don't just end at declaring we are saved, but we also get changed, we get transformed. And so we'll be taking time to understand what it means to get saved and also to get transformed. Uh, along the way, I'll be doing some demonstration. That's why we have two glasses here of water, one with a clear glass of water, and another one with a darkened uh, liquid in it. And I'll be, along the way, I want, I'll tell us what it means, uh, what, what, what this is all about. Uh, I want us to understand first what is salvation. Salvation, in some other areas, is defined as deliverance from harm. That is Salvation from harm or from ruin or destruction. This is what happens, that when we declare Jesus Christ is Lord in our life and we receive him in our hearts, from then on we are delivered from harm. We are delivered from the influence of Satan. From then on, we are no longer under the power of Satan. Somebody else, the Bible also, uh, some other explanation is that deliverance from sin or dominion of Satan by faith in Christ. It, has, it takes faith in Christ. And then we are delivered from the power of Satan. And I want to declare by, I want to show by demonstration. Once we are saved, we could be like this glass. This is somebody who is not born again. And this person is under the covering, and you can see is, there's some other covering. This covering of darkness. And all that is in that person is darkness. And once you are under this darkness, there's nothing good that can come out of you. You don't have the freedom to make your choice. You don't have the freedom to worship God freely. You are in bondage. But the moment you receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, and he comes into your life, the Lord lifts the covering. The covering of, of darkness that was over you is removed from you. And so you now have openness. 
you're no longer under sh the shadow or the covering of Satan, but you have, and you have been saved. But now note here that you have been saved by the same person. The liquid here, the color does not change. The nature of this person has not changed. Though the covering has been removed, but the person is saved. The person can go to heaven immediately if Jesus came back. But now, this is not the end. The Lord desires that we, at one time in our lives, we will become clean and as pure as this clean water. And we are going to be discussing on those two areas. But let us to look at uh, why do we say that it is in Christ? There's no salvation without the Lord Jesus Christ. It is Jesus Christ who saved us or who saves us. And the Bible tells us, we start with the Corinthians chapter 6 and verses 20. What does the Bible say? It says, for we were bought at a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. We, Jesus is the one that buys our freedom. This covering that we're talking about does not come automatically by just our wish. But it is it's a, through the power of our Lord Jesus Christ for what he paid for. He paid for our salvation. And through him, now we can get the liberty. We can get the freedom. We can detach ourselves from the kingdom of Satan. And the Bible says in the book of 1 Corinthians and even chapter 7 in the verses 21, the Bible also speaks to us and it says, you, Were you called while a slave? Do not be concerned about it. But if you can be made free, rather use it. For he who is called in the Lord while a slave is the Lord's freed man. Likewise, he was called while he is free is Christ's slave. You are bought at a price. Do not become slaves of men. When we were not born again, we were slaves of Satan. We had the covering of the Satan in our lives. And the devil could do whatever he wished to do over us. He had authority over us. He had mandate over us. He could, it could determine how we move around in life. Sometimes we are deceived. We imagine that we have the freedom, but in real sense, you have no freedom. It is the devil that decides what you, he, you do in your life. You may feel like you, you, you can do what you wish, but you still under the covering of darkness by the power of Satan. And unless Jesus by himself, by his power, delivers you and is able through him to remove this covering or to take you away from the kingdom of Satan, you cannot do it by yourself. Now, Peter was quick also in his letter. In first letter, Peter 1 and 18, he was also quick to explain in his letter. And he says in verses 18, or uh, chapter 1 of first Peter, the Bible says that you knowing that you are not redeemed by corruptible things like silver and gold from your aimless conduct received by tradition from your fathers. Peter was trying to say here that we have not been bought but with silver and gold. And this was encouraging me. When I was reading this, it was encouraging me to know that what has bought us the precious blood of Jesus is much more valuable, much more valuable than silver and gold. It's unfortunate that some Christians are lured or are cheated with silver and gold, that is money. Not knowing that they have already been purchased by a more valuable, uh, call it thing, the blood of Jesus. We have been bought. That redemption, that removal of the covering from Satan, that deliverance from the kingdom of Satan to come to have the liberty in Christ was purchased 
by the blood, innocent blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. When he shed that blood, he presented it to our Father, and it paid for our price. And from then on, we can be, we, through that shed blood, we can be accepted back by our Lord. The Lord looks, when the Lord looks at us, he does not see us in the nature of our sin. He does not see us in the nature of sin. He does not see us in this nature of sin because of the cleansing of our Lord Jesus Christ. He sees us in a different light that now we are his children. We may not be as pure per se immediately, but he sees us and uh, as his children. And so we, we, he loves us. He, we become the, his children, the Bible says, as many as received Jesus Christ, he gave them the power to be the children of God. And so because we have received this Jesus Christ, we have become the children of God. And we have the liberty. We have, uh, we have that freedom and liberty to serve the Lord. Now, I want to, to tell you that in Satan's kingdom, in Satan's kingdom, there is no freedom. You may think you have the freedom, but you are a slave of sin. You are a slave of sin. There are some people who, have, who are cheated that they can be sinless without Christ. They say oh, all you need in salvation is do good things, is uh, do well. But our, our works of righteousness, the Bible says, is like uh, um, rags, rotten rags or uh, defiled things before the eyes of God. It's, it's something defiled, something rotten, something dirty before the, because we cannot attain the, the holiness of God. We cannot get to that holiness of God by ourselves. It's only the pure blood of Jesus Christ that him who never shed, made, committed any sin. It is only him, Jesus, who is able to pay the price and to redeem us, to buy us back, to purchase us from the kingdom of Satan. And now we are acceptable before our Father, through Jesus Christ. The Bible continues to encourage us that in the kingdom of God, there is liberty. Kuna uhuru. There is liberty. When you're in the kingdom of Satan, you have no liberty to choose what you want to do. You are influenced and you are a slave, you are a slave of sin. But when you receive the Lord Jesus Christ, you become free. You are set free. You make your own choice. Now you can worship God, the Lord God, our Father, freely. You can, you can, you can choose the way you want. You can even choose not to. You have liberty. In God, God is not a God of bondage. God is not a God of holding us. But God gives us a freedom. Freedom either to choose to serve him, freedom to sit back, or if you want to go back, you have the freedom. But God gives us that freedom. In the book of Romans chapter 8, book of Romans chapter 8 and verses 21, the Bible says, because the creation itself also will be delivered from the bondage of corruption and to the glorious liberty of the children of God. The children of God have liberty. We have freedom to serve the Lord as we wish. And uh, we can choose the way we want to go. I want to tell any Christian, you can choose any way you want to go. If you want to go the way back to Satan, you can choose. It is your choice. If you want to go back to the Lord, it is you. But when you have the Spirit of God, when you have received this Lord Jesus Christ in your life, you have the liberty and you can easily, you receive the Holy Spirit who helps you. But as I'll be demonstrating, once you get born again, Yes, you have, the, the covering has been removed. The covering has been removed from your life. But remember, you have not been cleansed. You have not been cleansed. You are still the same former person in many ways. So the Spirit of God has come upon you, but yet there is still a lot in you of the former self. You don't get to purity immediately. You don't get pure immediately. And this is what many people imagine, that once you get saved, you get to purity immediately. And that's why the Bible talks about uh, 
being uh, being transformed, and we're going to talk more about that. Uh, in the book of uh, Luke 17 and verses 20, the Bible reminds us and tells us that when we, uh -huh, when he was asked by the Pharisees when the kingdom of God would come, he answered them and said, the kingdom of God does not come with observation, nor will they say here it is, for indeed the kingdom is within you. What happens when you receive Jesus Christ, he comes inside you and he wants to work within you. The kingdom of God is within you. Don't look for it outside there. It is within you. You have the Holy Spirit of God within you. You receive Jesus Christ within you and God the Father makes a board in you. You have, you have the God, the data in you. But yet there's some work to do that you may be truly, you may really enjoy this liberty that we are talking about in Christ Jesus. Now, you must understand that while the Spirit of God comes within us, God is a spirit, but we are in the flesh. And this flesh, we need to work on it so that it is controlled by the spirit. Now, the Bible tells us in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 3, 2 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 17, Now the Lord is a spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. This is what we are saying. Once you receive the Spirit of God within you, there is liberty. There is freedom. You can worship God. And, those, and now I want to remind you what happened. When Jesus Christ on the, the cross, when he released his ghost or his spirit, and the Bible says that the cutting, the cutting that was in the temple was torn into two. What does it mean? That heavy cutting. Before the death of our Lord Jesus Christ, there was a heavy cutting. And no one, not anyone was free to go to the Holy of Holies or that place where the, 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 coven, the Ark of the Covenant was, which represented where the presence of God was. Not anybody was free to go there. Except the high priest who would go there not every other moment, but at appointed times. And he had to be careful about himself. He had to cleanse himself. But now, in Christ Jesus, we have the liberty now. We are not covered in sin, but now we have the liberty. We can now go direct to our Father. I want to encourage you who is born again. You, you have, don't have to depend on your pastor. That you can only pray through your pastor. That's only your pastor who can pray th for things and they take place in your life. I want to encourage you now, when you're born again, you can go to the presence of our Heavenly Father and you can tell him anything you wish. You can pray to him. You can ask him anything in the name of Jesus and you will receive it. Why? Because Jesus has made the way uh, perfect. I mean, he has given us the liberty. He has bought uh, for our, our freedom to go to the, to the presence of Jehovah. By his blood, by his name, we are able to get to the Holy of Holies, to the place of God, and we can talk to him one-on-one, -on -one, and we shall receive answers, and we shall receive blessings, because our Father will be willing to listen. But in the name of Jesus. That's why we have to pray in the name of Jesus. Once I got born again, I wondered, is it possible that I can pray on my own and receive things and have things happen in my life without going through the pastor, without being laid hard on by the leaders? I'm not saying it's wrong to be prayed for by the pastor, but there's this understanding and notion among many people, that unless you, 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 oil has been, uh, you have been anointed with oil, the pastor has prayed over you, even sometimes showing shaking so that uh, you really feel, you know, we want to feel the pastor is really uh, interceding and uh, really is committed, you know, passionate, you know. Sometimes we wish we want to the pastor shake and, uh, and, and, and hold uh, his fist, you know. We, we feel this is a time, this is a time my prayers are being heard. 
<laughs> There's one sister who said, uh, she was saying, I like, I like when so, Pastor so and so prays for me. He, ceased, he seems to be really passionate. He seems to be serious. It is not how emotional we are that we receive answers. It's not how emotional you are that you receive answers from God. When my child comes to me as my son, he does not have to be emotional about anything. He, has, he doesn't have to, to, to really behave in a funny way. He doesn't have to dance in a particular way. He doesn't have to go and change clothing. He doesn't have to go and wash uh, hands and all that so that he comes. And he doesn't have to come through the mother uh, or another sister. In fact, I, I get offended if my child would go, will, cannot come direct to me to ask anything from me direct. He has to go through the mother. And I, 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 especially when my children were younger, if one would go try, try to go through the mother, I would not be very pleased. I would rather, why don't you come to me? What is it? Come to me. And you see, when the child comes to me, he has the liberty to, to ask me, Dad, I have A, B, C, D. I'd want A, B, C, D. And uh, it is like this, like this. And I would rejoice at that. And I would, uh, as a father, I look forward to that. As a father, I want to have that fellowship. And so I want to encourage you when you're born again. You have liberty. You have freedom to your father. You can go to your father in heaven. And not only is it pleasing to yourself, but it's more pleasing to the father. Because uh, the, our father loves us. The Bible tells us that he loves us with an everlasting love. Our Father loves us with an everlasting love. This is the beauty of salvation. We can go to our Father, talk to him, and tell him, Father, here I am. I am like this. I desire this. I want this. But we are only liberated to get there by through the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We have, we have received liberty. And as we go to our Father, He is faithful even to minister to us. He will speak to us. He will answer our prayers. We don't need that other covering. We, we, it's not wrong to be prayed for by a pastor. You can share the burden together two are better than one. He can be prayed for. There's anointing also. We respect the anointing. But also remember that you don't have to be held captive. That unless a particular man of God in quotes, unless so and so prays for, because this is what has, dis has uh, made many people get lost. You imagine that only a particular man of God somewhere can pray for you, and because maybe you have seen him on TV, when he, pre he prays for people and they, 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 there's emotion. God is not a God of with that kind of emotion. God, because he's God, he doesn't have to demonstrate funny things, you know, to, 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 to show his might. No, he is God. He is God. And this is what I say. When I get to my house, I am the man of the house. I don't have to come shouting and asking people, do you know I'm the man of the house? No, I know I'm the man of the house. I don't have to shout to, to my people, give me this because I'm the mother, man of the house. No, I don't have to shout. I don't have to demonstrate anything. I just have to declare, can I have this? Because I'm the, fa I'm the father. And as my children, they just need to come to me politely and say, dad, this is a situation. Can we have this? And when we do it, we have the liberty. I thank God. We thank you, Lord, for this liberty that we have. But there, there's one caution. There's one caution. In Galatians 2, 4, the Bible tells us that, uh, and this occurred because of these false brethren secretly brought in who came in to, to spy out, uh, on our, at, out our liberty, which we have in Christ Jesus, but they might bring us into bondage. We, uh, we should be very careful about this liberty God has given us. Don't take it for granted. Don't allow this liberty to be taken away from you. Uhuru wa kuabudu mungu. Uhuru wa kumuabudu mungu na kuobe bele zake. Kumtafuta na ku, kumuamini. Uh, hiyo uhuru konayo. Usikubali ishukuliwe na awe yote. Do not allow it to be taken away by somebody. Do not allow... To, do not allow yourself to get back to bondage. You have the freedom. Once you have this freedom to worship God, do not allow someone else or Satan to come and bring another covering over your life and bring bondage again to you. 
May the Lord help us that we will not allow ourselves through funny, funny ministers or some decept- through some deception that we go back to bondage. God desires that we worship him in truth, in, with that, lib- that liberty, with that freedom. That's what about salvation, how wonderful salvation is. How I pray that you value this salvation that was bought by our Lord Jesus Christ through his blood. And the Bible says life is in the blood. So if he bought us with his blood, he bought us with his life. And God has gave it all through his own son, Jesus Christ, his only begotten son, that we may have this liberty. We are saved. We are no longer the bondage of Satan. We are no longer the covering of Satan. We have the liberty to serve God. And God helping us, we are going to see more about what we need to do so that we get more to celebrate this joy and this liberty in Christ Jesus. Let's pray as we conclude. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for your word. Thank you for salvation in Jesus Christ. We thank you that you have given us liberty, that you have delivered us from the kingdom of Satan, that you have removed the covering of of darkness of our lives, and you have given us the the freedom to approach you, even to the holy of holies, in your very presence, O God, and bring our cries, our petitions, our supplications. And Lord, you are willing to hear, to listen, and not only to listen and hear, but also answer. Father, we thank you because you're merciful and you're a good God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. Mm-hmm.